Hi Saints. Um getting ready to leave to work. I leave in like 10 minutes. But look at that. See that beautiful blue sky? It's sunny. It's uh the soft breeze outside. Just amazing, amazing glory of God, you know. And um I just wanted to give you guys a quick message before I head out. Okay. Um, some of you asked me a question. Because I did a video called uh, Rise for God. Or I'm sorry, Women of God Rise. Some of you asked me a question about what do I think about the man's authority. Um, I did a video on this about women preaching in the church before and the women of God video breaks it down for you where if God did not want a woman to have a voice in a church he would be, or a woman you know to have a voice in a church he never would have asked he never would have appeared to Mary and tell her to go to the disciples to say that he's resurrected he would have appeared to a man okay like I said, to this day, nobody can explain. You have men, and I'm not causing division, but you have men arguing that a woman is supposed to stay quiet and, you know, acting like the man is supposed to have total control over the woman, that she's supposed to stay quiet and do what he says. If he says jump, how high? You know, that kind of thing. The man is supposed to be the head of the household. I'm not taking that away from him. You know what I'm saying? That's true. The man's supposed to have authority over the head of the household. But God made woman and man equal. Okay? The man's supposed to love his wife as Christ loved him. And, and then the woman's supposed to love her husband. Um, the man has power over the woman's body. The woman has power over the man's body. That just basically means that they're one flesh united in marriage. A godly covenant okay so the woman's not supposed to overstep the man's boundaries in the marriage you know but the man's supposed to respect the woman the woman's got to respect the man and they have to pretty much be there for each other and love one another I'm not saying that the woman has to overstep the husband's authority no way am I saying that as far as the church setting goes the woman can have a voice in the church okay um you might say oh a woman's not supposed to have authority over a man agreed Okay, but if God did not want a woman to have a voice in a church, why did he ask Mary to appear to the disciples and again to say that he was alive? Why not just appear in front of a man? Okay, so can a woman have authority over man? Not in the context of being married. You know, in, while they're married... The man, she can't overstep the man's authority, but they still have to respect each other. You know, he's still the head of the household, true enough, okay? They're supposed to respect one another. They're equal, even though the man is the head of the household, just like the Lord is the head of the body of Christ, okay? I'm not doubting that. And then, as far as the church setting is, goes, a woman can preach, a woman can teach, a woman can prophesy. Now, some people say, oh, a woman cannot be a pastor in the church. Well, who said that? People assume that that's in the Bible. They assume that. If God didn't allow for women to be pastors, why are there female pastors now in this day and age? Why were there female pastors back in the 50s? Why were there female pastors back in the 40s, even in the 1800s? Y'all can look it up. I'm going to try to leave scriptures below. I mean, not scriptures, articles showing you that there have been pastors, female pastors even back in the time of Apostle Paul. Females that went out and preached the gospel and had their own ministry. So those that are telling you that females cannot be pastors, okay, they misconstrue it. They say that because females are pastors, they're overstepping the man's boundaries. No, they're not. They're not. You know how many husband and wife pastors are in a church? I, the church around here that I go to, they're a married couple. They're husband and wife. And the wife, who is a pastor, and a husband who is a pastor, she never oversteps his boundaries. He would speak first, and then she would speak after he spoke. So those that are telling you that females cannot be pastors, 
there of the devil. And I'm just going to be straight up. Straight up. If females cannot be pastors, why are they pastors now? Why were they pastors back then when Apostle Paul was around, the righteous prophets of old? Each of the prophets of old, even the females, had their own ministries. So don't listen to people when they tell you that. They're trying to limit the woman's voice in the church. And I'm not causing division or a strife in the body of Christ. Because God calls for laborers. He doesn't say, oh, we need more men laborers. Oh, we need more female. He's asking for women and men to labor for the kingdom of God in these here last days. God says that there are prophets or there are there are prophets there are pastors there are bishops he doesn't say female or male and, and people say you know when apostle paul says um there's a part in the bible that says uh suffers for a woman to remain silent in the church doesn't mean that a woman cannot have a voice that verse means that a woman cannot overstep the man's boundaries she could still have a voice in the church she could still teach she could still preach she could still prophesy but she can't overstep the man's authority that's what that means. When he says, I suffer for a woman not to teach, doesn't mean that a woman cannot teach. They just, people, not everybody, but people just read the Bible and use their own knowledge to decipher it. They don't go to the Holy Father for that. They just assume just because a woman suffer a woman not to teach, that a woman can't teach, that a woman should stay quiet. A woman can have a voice in the church. She cannot overstep the boundaries of a man. The man is the head of the household, is the head of the church, but she cannot overstep that boundaries. God sees man and woman as equal, Yes, the man has more authority, but the, but the woman cannot overstep that authority. Man and woman are equal, but as long as the woman acknowledges that the man is the head of the household or the head of the church, she cannot that she cannot overstep that authority. You know, man and woman are equal in terms of a woman has a voice in the church. Like I said, if God didn't allow for women to be pastors, you got these false teachers telling you guys, oh, women can't be pastors. If God didn't allow for women to be pastors, okay. Um, there wouldn't be pastors now or a female and way back when and way back when when Apostle Paul was around now um, people say oh well they misconstrue this as being a spirit of Jezebel no it's not a spirit of Jezebel That's, that people that say that they don't have discernment a spirit of Jezebel is one that wants to rise up and be the main authoritative figure in the church meaning whether it's a female or male they strive to get as many followers as they want. It doesn't matter what gender they are. There's female and male Jezebel spirits. They want to get as many followers as they want. They want a lot of followers to come to them. Okay? Now, you guys ask me, you know, you know, like I said, you guys ask me about the pastor thing. Female can be a pastor in a church. Anybody tells you otherwise, they're of the devil. You know, God sets females as watchmen. A lot of these men out here are teaching, and I'm not saying everybody's like that. But even women are agreeing with that heresy that women cannot be watchmen. If God tells you, and I said this before, to warn somebody of their way, evil ways, and you're a female, you stay shut because you're listening to somebody that says, oh, you can't have a voice in the church, God's going to hold you accountable. Like I said, in my church that I attend over here, I've been attending this church for 15 years and this pastor our husband and wife they're both pastors they're both wonderful people of the Lord and she never oversteps his authority over his boundaries when I say that she acknowledges his authority he usually goes up and he speaks first she waits for him to finish and then she speaks after and they've been doing that for such a long time and they've won so many souls to Christ so when the devil is trying to tell you people that females cannot be pastors, don't acknowledge that, don't listen to that. You go straight to Christ. Okay? People that are teaching that women cannot be pastors, that they have to stay shut, they have to stay silent, are causing division in the body of Christ. Because here in these last days, we need, we need, okay, um, as many workers for the kingdom of God as possible. Now, there is a strange fire, like I said, in the body of church that's teaching these heresies. Okay, It is a Jezebel spirit that wants the female voice to be quiet in the body of Christ, to be silent in the church, to be quiet, not warn about sin, not embrace their callings, whether it's prophecy, bishop, pastor, whatever. You can agree or disagree. 
okay? But I, I'm going to speak forth God's word, and nobody's going to stop me. You're not going to tell me that I can stay silent in the church. I'm here for the will of the Father. That's who I'm here for. Not for man, for the Father. And I'm going to do His will. And if He tells me to preach the word or to minister to the lost, I'm going to do that because I'm scared of Him. So ladies, like I said in that video, women of God, rise up and let your voice be heard in the church. If you are a pastor, if you're a bishop, if you're a teacher, if you're a preacher, you speak the word of God. That's not Jezebel behind us. You speak the word of God, that's the Holy Spirit leading you. The Jezebel demon on this, on YouTube and in the world is trying to stop you from letting your voice be heard. Okay? Don't let nobody stop you from letting your voice be heard. You do the will of the Father. The Father in heaven. Now, as far as this, this um, issue with gender... People are blaming that on women too, saying that women are helping to destroy the gender. That's not true. It's not women's fault that the government is passing laws saying that um, men who identify as a girl can go use the girl's bathroom and vice versa. Women that identify as a man can go use the boy's bathroom. They don't say anything about that. How they're, they're, they're destroying, the, they're trying to erase the gender from all aspects of society with laws that are saying if you identify as a woman you can you're a man you can use a female bathroom if you're a woman and you identify as a man you can use a male bathroom and they're also trying to come out with a third gender where it's not man or woman they're also trying to remove from the vocabulary of mankind they're trying to remove the word woman or man. They're trying to find like a third way to identify a gender that is both male and female, kind of like a spirit of hermaphrodite. Spirit of hermaphrodite is active right now. It is a spirit, evil spirit, that is both male and female gender in one. It is like an asexual gender, it has no gender, it's just male and female in one. And that spirit is active in the government today, based on the laws that they're passing. Um, other ways that they're trying to destroy gender is by pushing the transgender agenda. Well, men are, are um, in the process of becoming a woman, or a woman's in the process of becoming a man. That destroys the gender as well. Or the homosexual agenda, how a man can still dress like a woman, but he doesn't have to. You know, he could dress like a woman and still have his organs i mean that whole thing is wrong don't get me don't get it twisted that whole thing is is messed up and like i said how they're promoting the transgender agenda and in in, in kids programs that's not women's fault <laughs> that's the government the government is pushing those laws trying to neutralize what god had set in the beginning one man one woman one flesh man and woman in the holy covenant of marriage they're even attacking the sanctity of marriage coming out this gay gay marriage the same sex marriage that's against god the transgender agenda is against god women are not destroying that government is stepping in and making all these crazy laws a lot of us women disagree with that just like a lot of you men disagree with that you know, some of you brothers in christ emailed me and said you know my wife is active in the church. My girlfriend, my fiance is active in the church. She's a pastor. She's a wonderful woman of God. You know, there's these doctrines flying around, whether it's on YouTube or out in the world, saying a woman can't have a voice in the church or a woman can't be a pastor. And you disagreed, and I understand. Some of you might disagree with me, and that's your opinion. But I suggest you go to God and you ask, because you are not going to stop me from speaking the word of God. Ask Jesus to show you that a woman can have a voice on the church. She can teach, she can prophesy, and she can be his pastor, as long as she does not overstep the boundaries of the authority a man has as being head of the household.
The Jezebel spirit is born out of witchcraft and rebellion and is one of the most common spirits in operation today. It is a powerful enemy of the body of Christ, the church. It operates freely on even sincere believers whose hearts are for God individually and has also attained positions of power within churches. In the secular world, these people are often thought to suffer from narcissistic personality disorder, paranoia, and are often labeled as psychopaths or just plain nasty, arrogant, or even plain evil. Yet the most accurate and complete description of the characteristics of these people is to be found within a spiritual context. This particular spirit, though only one of many malicious spirits, establishes its stronghold primarily in women. However, many men have been victimized by it as well where it functions as a controlling spirit. In the wake of every person controlled by the Jezebel spirit is a life of chaos, confusion, instability, broken relationships, and destruction. Every person that ever came into close contact with it has seen aggressive attempts to divide their relationships with their loved ones. While Jezebel's belief system is incorrect, they are very firmly held beliefs. Jezebels are usually people of deep convictions. As mentioned, many people controlled by the Jezebel spirit have a true heart for God and earnestly desire to serve him. The original Jezebel, the spirit's first noteworthy victim, Queen of Israel, was devotedly religious, but was at total enmity with God. She worshiped at the altar of Baal, worship of the flesh. Modern day Jezebels may indeed believe they are serving the one true God. However, the true hidden agenda is self-worship. As Fushia Pickett points out in her book, The Next Move of God, the Jezebel spirit's mission is to kill the prophets, as it tried and often has throughout time. The goal of the victim is usually quite different, to gain identity, glory, recognition, power, and satisfy the need for acknowledgement and worth from others. In other words, the praise of men. Matthew chapter 6, 2, 5, and 16. This is an outgrowth of desire for love and self-worth we all have with the wrong focus, self. As a secondary mission, the Jezebel spirit seeks to emasculate all men or divest them of their authority and power over others. It fosters a distrust and or hatred of men in general and nurtures motives of vengeance in the victim towards some men in particular, usually as a result of abuse or neglect by a significant male in the victim's life. We attach a female gender to this spirit, but really it has no gender. It is a sea thing, terribly aggressive, very determined, callous, controlling, narcissistic, power hungry, manipulative, unrepentant, deceitful, and overwhelmingly evil spirit. And those are mostly only its good points. This spirit is definitely Satan's woman. Probably most deceiving to many is that Jezebel was religious and did religious things. She was the daughter of Ethabel, meaning with Baal. She converted her husband Ahab to follow Baal. Ahab married her against God's command. The name Jezebel specifically means without dwelling or habitation. A true explanation of Jezebel can clearly be described as the worship of self. The clear battle with the Jezebel spirit is over people. In the church, that spirit desires to rule and control the people of God. If we are not people of decision, we will fall under the spell of the Jezebel spirit. She is a supporter of and heavily influential in religious organizations as well as politics. 
While Jezebel is religious, she wells her false power against the true prophetic flow of God. She hates the prophets and all prophetic ministries. Specifically, she hates repentance, humility, and intercessory prayer because they destroy her strongholds of stubbornness and pride. Jezebel's love to project a sense of power they do not have. It is based on intimidation in order to cloud the minds of those they desire to oppress. How frequently that spirit tries to wield influence in the church, in spiritual organizations? If you don't see it my way, I will just pull out and you can't deal without me and all the work I prepared, I will keep. Yes. If one does not go along with his or her actions, there will be consequences. Intimidation always seek to move the person through threats. This use of fear puts the victim under control out of fear of losing something precious to him. This is blackmail, ladies and gentlemen, and far from God's love, because these are all improper channels, use of illegitimate power and authority projection of power that is not ours to use. This by no means insinuates that a person shouldn't stand up for himself, but rather that it should be done through proper channels. Manipulating, intimidating, and dominating another human being are blatant uses of control and illegitimate authority. Jezebel uses other people as objects where it suits her need to gain control, influence, and power. Once she has gained the control desired, she generally rejects and tosses the people aside. If they are in her family, she does this emotionally. Jezebel displays angry, vicious, and sometimes violent behavior when opposed. She will turn on the one who refuses to do her will or submit to her, especially if she has been successful in manipulating this person in the past, frequently with vicious, berating verbal attacks aimed at humiliation. The emotional damage caused by these outbreaks can be devastating to the one at whom she directed her wrath. This is often the source of terrible emotional wounds for her children and spouse. When this angry behavior happens in public, it often exposes the true spirit in operation to others who may have been previously deceived. No is the operative word for Jezebel. When those in spiritual authority say no to her, she is ready for war. Remember, Jezebel is a warring spirit who is always dressed for battle. Have you ever felt insecure? Be careful. Jezebel loves to flow in the realm of insecurity. In addition to destroying those around her, Jezebel especially hates the victim she is controlling. Remember, the mission of Jezebel to kill the prophets. The victim is often herself anointed of God to be prophetic and will ultimately cause her victim to self-destruct. This is the Black Widow Spider Syndrome of the Jezebel spirit. Black Widow Spiders kill their mates. In the spirit realm, there are two implications. One, the Jezebel seeks to kill the male authority figure or prophet and two, she seeks to kill her victim, which is made it to her when Jezebel takes control of their life. Jezebel's rival authority, which means to despise or show no respect for it. Building on fear of authority, especially since men are frequently the authority figures who originally hurt them, coupled with rebellion, she hates anyone placed in authority over her and seeks to destroy them and take their power. An early manifestation in childhood is a lack of respect for self or others and no respect for positions either theirs or others. Jezebel is a classic backstabber. She will smile at you, give you a hug and a kiss, and then, as soon as you turn around, stab you in the back, repeatedly, with vigor, enjoying every wound she inflicts. She is a most vicious and devious spirit. 
Beware. Control and manipulation are the strongest parts of the Jezebel nature. These are the spirits of witchcraft and are extremely dangerous. Nearly everything the Jezebel does utilizes one or both spirits to attain her goal. Jezebel is the ultimate manipulator and nobody is better at manipulation than the person, victim, being controlled by this spirit. But Jezebel cannot control you until she first seduces you. Beware of flattery, smooth prophetic sayings, and seducing tears from this spirit. Jezebel loves false spiritual government. She knows how to create, flow, and operate in it. She views children as tools and weapons to manipulate your heart to advance her goals. Jezebel is like a shark. She is most vicious and dangerous. She circles the lives of others looking for teachable, seducible, controllable disciples of her own. Jezebel likes to birth spiritual children of her own as she looks for disciples to eat from her own table. She will look for those that are in rebellion, who are weak, wounded, or those who are contending and fighting spiritual authority. She knows how to use deep emotional hurts and wounds to manipulate and control as she creates soul ties with you. Jezebel loves to pull people under herself and away from those who can truly speak into their lives. Jezebel knows how to stir you up because she flows best in whirlwind of confusion and turmoil. She probes your soul, looking for your weaknesses. She is expert at developing soul ties and often does so. As previously mentioned, Jezebel will use any tool available to manipulate those around her to do her will. She often use fear to manipulate people into submission. Jezebel is very possessive and domineering. She wants to control you. Jezebel loves power. Give me, give me, give me. You see, money is not really the issue with this spirit. It's power and authority that she's after. She likes to be in control of your life because she draws her strength from controlling you. That's why you feel spiritually drained after contending with her. The Jezebel principality wants to control you. She uses self-pity and her own weaknesses to manipulate another into submitting to her out of compassion or pity. She will even use prayer to manipulate the one she is attempting to control, especially prayers prayed audibly over that person to create the illusion that doing Jezebel's will is actually obeying God, or to generate fear or other emotion within the person which the Jezebel can use for the manipulation. Even though often powerfully gifted of the Lord, the Jezebel will frequently operate in the false discernment of the enemy by speaking words of knowledge gained from familiar spirits and not from the Spirit of God. This is witchcraft. The power of witchcraft is derived from Satan himself. Every attempt at manipulation or control sells out more to Satan and strengthens the deception the Jezebel is under. If you get between Jezebel and the person she is trying to control, she'll attack you viciously, trying her best to destroy your relationship with that person. She will try and destroy your reputation, set you up, and to separate you from her victim. Jezebels are attracted to people of power like moths to a flame. She'll connect herself with presidents, people in the media, people who have money, people of power. 
often a very intelligent, efficient, attractive, and even blatant Jezebel can be found serving at the feet of prominent leaders, even in the church. The deception and or seduction of the Jezebel is often so successful that the leader does not recognize who is at his right hand. The Jezebel's true desire is to risk the power from the person being served. If that person is prophetic in nature, the actual mission is to destroy them by any means available. Destroy their credibility, undermine their authority, discredit their ministry, cause them to fall in sexual temptation, etc. The Jezebel is extremely bossy by nature, though subtly with the low profile type. She is easily offended if her authority is questioned and will often respond with extreme anger at even the slightest offense. Two things have always plagued the church, control and desire to dominate. This power struggle has always divided and short-circuited the power of the church. The most cunning and yet most common way the spirit of Jezebel controls and operates is through manipulation. Manipulation is used in several ways, such as flattery, self-pity, hinting for something, etc. The use of manipulation to extract money is also used to fulfill one's own purpose. Ammunition too is another issue. Jezebels are continually collecting ammunition. They acquire information that they can use against you in case they ever begin to lose their grip of power. All of what they collected they would use against you without mercy and give it to others so that they can exploit it in the public to give you a bad self-image. Jezebel's demand worship from others, the Queen Bee Syndrome. She must have dominance and control in her home. Other family members must exist to please her. For example, people that carry the Jezebel spirit are looking for people to basically praise them, to always be in support of what they're doing, to always be at their beck and call, to always be the yes man when they need something. You can't say no to this spirit. If you say no to Jezebel, there will be a major problem. So anytime the spirit of Jezebel is around, she will always want people to surround her with praise and attention that keeps her lifted at the forefront of everyone's mind. Many times the ones that carry the Jezebel spirit talk non-stop. They have a need to feel power and authority and they will do anything to achieve it. They feel they know more than anyone, therefore they dominate all conversations. Jezebel used talking as a form of control. In a typical conversation, he or she does all the talking whether it is about sports, the weather, or the kingdom of God. Because of this form of control, he or she is unable to receive input from anyone in his life. All conversations with him is one-sided. You are doing the listening. And if ever there is a break and you want to say something, the Jezebel switches off and does not hear you. One of its slay ways to slip away once confronted is to try to confuse you by changing the subject five times in one minute. Confusion keeps them undiscovered and unexposed. Therefore, it is impossible to converse with a Jezebel in logic. They would write several pages dealing with all sorts of other situations than the one you are confronting them with. The context would be so vague that no one would understand head or tails. If it is in conversation, they would simply talk nonsense to dilute and confuse you, never responding to your question. In this situation, one has to repeat the question and ask them only to respond to that question. They never do. They never will. This is very important for Christians to understand because when dealing with and confronting a person who carry the spirit of Jezebel, they will always run from questions.
Jezebel is a master of criticism, murmuring, and complaining. Often those whom she is at enmity with are deliberately cursed in a conscious effort to punish and bring them back in line, to bring them back under her control. Jezebel firmly believes she has right on her side in doing these things and displays vicious and callous disregard for the well-being and independence of others having convinced herself that it is ultimately for their good as well as that she knows best and really has their best interest at heart in doing so. Those people who have been on the receiving side of Jezebel's curse feel the anger and the viciousness of her curses acutely and mainly succumb to them. However, for those under the protection of the cross, these curses are most often transformed into blessings instead, leaving the Jezebel sapped of emotional energy, frustrated, confused, and completely defeated, wondering what went wrong. The Jezebel spirit actually hates and shuns repentance and humility. Because the Jezebel spirit is prideful and rebellious, she hates repentance and humility. These are two mighty weapons which can be used against her. This is also the key in discerning this spirit. A pride-filled, rebellious person refusing to repent has a Jezebel spirit. Is Jezebel a spirit or a work of the flesh? Simply put, Jezebel is a spirit, but it has found access through uncrucified flesh. You will never have a person with a controlling spirit admit he is wrong. It is always the fault of someone else. If you insist on an apology and confront the controller, you will probably get a screaming response such as, Yes, I'm wrong. I'm always wrong. This sarcastic spewing is a long way from repentance. Her expectations of others are always unrealistic because others cannot meet her demand for complete submission. If they do try, she despises them and casts them aside when she has what she wants out of them. Any attempting to relate to a person with this spirit is literally in a no-win situation. Nothing pleases this spirit. Jezebel can work through friends, relatives, and very often through committed Christians, true believers. The truth is, we are all susceptible to some of these behaviors. But when you find an ingrained pattern of these behaviors, when you encounter someone who goes to extreme lengths to appear perfect, even when they are clearly not, refusing to submit to critical self-examination or be subject to criticism of friends and family, then you may as well start looking for the other telltale signs of this very dangerous spirit. When you find relationships in ruin and a trail of hurting, even traumatized people, and stubborn refusal at responsible reconciliation attempts look a little closer. When you find antagonism that goes beyond mere annoyance or irritation, stretching to a relentless aggression as opposed to passive pursuit to break someone in order to bring them to heal, get very suspicious. When you are sent several messages bearing messages of intimidation, fear, and discouragement with the repeated reminder that you will never hear an apology and that you will only be allowed back into the fold or their terms, know that Jezebel has sent her messengers to see you. Jezebels have a personality that has been shaped by controlling demonic thoughts. Therefore, the person must be willing to ruthlessly face truth and be willing to let God crucify his or her flesh. The flesh and its patterns must be subjected to the Holy Spirit daily in order for the person to be permanently set free from the Jezebel spirit. Discerning the Jezebel spirit. Use discernment and test the spirits. The victim controlled by the Jezebel spirit may exhibit many gifts and have a true heart for God, 
The reason she is a victim is that Jezebel is out to destroy her life, to kill her basically. The gifts and callings of God are given without repentance, Romans 11.29. In other words, the gifts are given by the Holy Spirit without regard to merit. You can't earn them. We are commanded to test the spirits according to 1 John 4.1, to test for Jezebel with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Remember, one, you shall know them by their fruits, Matthew 7.16, not their gifts. Two, Jezebel hates humility and repentance. She will refuse or dodge a call for either one of these to occur in her life or fake it if boxed in. She simply cannot and will not say she is sorry. And even if somehow she is forced to do so, it is very clear that she is not sorry at all. Genuine repentance and humility is easy enough to discern. Three, easily apparent in any Jezebel is complete selfishness, a total lack of empathy for others, though at times these emotions are feigned, but it's not real concern. Four, the characteristics, personality, and methods of operation will usually manifest themselves openly at times. The seducer is often blatantly obvious to everyone except the person being seduced. Jezebel worships herself, keeps the focus on herself, except where a false attitude of compassion or humility serves her purpose. She has difficulty talking at length about anyone but herself, even when counseling others. She is very proud and often extremely vain. Many Jezebels are reasonably attractive and some very beautiful. However, much of the seduction and attractiveness is actually demonically derived, giving them the ability to quickly form soul ties with people and thus proceed to control them, their lives and their futures. She now lives vicariously through them drawing their strength from them while sapping them of their strengths. Bitterness and resentment against past hurts and offenses are nurtured in the victim by the Jezebel spirit because she knows a root of bitterness will grow like a cancer and manifest itself in all sorts of physical ailments which she can use as tools of manipulation. Of course, this cancer of bitterness is also slowly destroying the victim. In many cases, the countenance of the victim gradually grows more and more unattractive, and in the end, victims controlled by the Jezebel spirit may resemble the very witch, like crones often used to symbolize witchcraft, where this spirit is birthed. The victim rots from the inside out, physically and spiritually, and it shows people eventually find Jezebel's spiritual ugliness very repulsive. Many Jezebels will be drawn to the most influential Jezebel in operation. Though this is done unconsciously, it has the effect of creating a full-fledged and very effective witch's coven with a high priestess in charge with devastating results. Jezebels utilize the spirits of murmuring and complaint and criticism, which are servant spirits in her stronghold. She uses criticism of perceived faults in others to build up her own self-esteem and to justify her disobedience of or lack of respect for others. Because she tends to perfectionism, any fault she finds in others is grounds for disobeying their authority. She uses criticism as a tool to manipulate those around her and along with murmuring and complaint causes divisiveness to weaken her opposition and thereby to gain control over and to destroy them. When the Jezebel spirit is confronted with the truth, it will perceive the confronter as the enemy. Then it counterattacks with assaults against this enemy. In fact, 
No greater wrath seems to occur than when a controlling person is confronted. This person will never admit guilt or relinquish the sense of power and will retaliate against the confronter. Defensiveness is a common reaction when a suggestion is made. People who carry the Jezebel spirit are full of pride with a mixture of insecurity which is deep rooted as a stronghold in their mind. Carriers of this spirit cannot take correction because all correction is perceived as rejection to them. Therefore, you will never hear a person with a controlling Jezebel spirit admit he or she is wrong. It will always be the fault of someone else, never theirs. Never is there confession of guilt or true remorse. The Jezebel spirit is in contrast to the will of God. Her will, goals, and self-purposes has become her God. Her will must be accomplished regardless of the consequences and no matter who get hurt in the process. Not only did Jezebel steal authority, she manipulated those in leadership. She used lies distortions, and many other forms to get her way. The Lord waits for someone to confront those who carry the Jezebel spirit. Many succumb to the Ahab spirit and simply turn their heads from the tactics out of fear. They reason that, after all, she is very religious and popular and works hard in the church. Or, what would people think of me if I confront her? The greatest weakness among leaders today is the fear of confrontation. They want peace without paying the price of confronting the manipulating and controlling tactics of those who carry the Jezebel spirit. If you confront someone with the Jezebel spirit, they'll make accusations at you and call you bad names and every evil name in the book. You will see hatred like you never seen before. This will even come from people who greatly appreciate you and your calling. They will quickly make you out to be a bad guy by telling others that you're a false prophet, a false teacher, your ministry is a lie. They'll spread hate. They'll tell others, don't buy your tapes, don't buy your videos, don't even support their ministry, they're false and convince them to not listen to anything you teach or say. People with this spirit will always act and carry themselves the same way when confronted. Sometimes carriers of the Jezebel spirit become temporarily remorseful and appear to be friendly or on your side, but soon she'll go right back to her controlling tactics the minute she or he don't get what they want. When it comes to prayer, she would be praying for her own agenda. There is no power in that. True fervent intercessory prayer causes hearts to change from pride to loftiness to repentance and humility. Nothing brings a greater death blow to the spirit of Jezebel. As it is typical of a Jezebel, she would complain that she wasn't appreciated enough to play with the emotions of others in her self-centered nature she would go to any lengths by lying and even exaggerating matters to make herself look spiritual and holy, super holy. After all, when being self-centered, no one is as important as they are. Jezebel's would state again and again that their decisions was the result of much prayer and fasting. She knows how to garner sympathy from others by knowing how to cry at the drop of a dime and fool almost anyone in sight. Don't let her tears fool you. They're designed to play with your emotions so that you can be on her side. She's very good at gathering people on her side to feel sorry for her. As for the Ahab spirit, it is known to abdicate his authority. It bespeaks of a mindset that avoids confrontation and denies fault. The spirit of Ahab is very weak and fearful. It loves its position, but fears confrontation.
everything will be better if I'm in control. I've heard from God, you have, my word has become the equivalent of God. If I can get other weak people to follow me, I can become their voice, I can become their thought, I can think for you. Does any of this sound familiar? If so, you may have encountered the Jezebel spirit. It is a demonic spirit, but it starts with a mindset or a mental stronghold. But if it's not caught, if it's not exposed, then the problem can be severe. Unmasking the Jezebel spirit, how to recognize it and how to be free from its influence. Next. Everyone has a story. Did you know that dreams are God's way of getting you to your future? He knows what's coming and he's gonna help you get there. Every life has something to share. More than anything, I want my life to please God. I want him to look at me and say, that's my girl. You can't take yourself so seriously. Embrace your goofiness. From tragedy to triumph, your memories will always be of the adventure, not the arrival. So savor the ride. This is real talk about real topics that will change your life. The key to communication is making a connection. So grab a seat and join the conversation. This is Joni Table Talk. Well, she is perhaps one of the most infamous women in the Bible. Her legacy is one of treachery, scheming, and manipulation, a legacy that's still at work today. So we're unmasking the Jezebel spirit and helping you break free. Joining me today is Tanya Taylor. Hello. It's an interesting to topic. I can't wait. I know. <laughs> It's going to be good. Melanie Brondo, how are you? Oh, wonderful. How are you? Good, good. And Kendra Kelly Dean. Yes, it's going to get deep. I understand. <laughs> I feel it. All right. And Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm oh, great. Thank good. you. Good to be here. This is an interesting subject we're going to be talking oh, about today. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. We all have stories. And our dear friend John Paul Jackson, welcome Hi. back to Table Talk. Thank you. Always so good to have you. I love and being here. You're always such a blessing. And of course, I have read uh, John Paul's book, Unmasking the Jezebel Spirit, and actually endorsed it several years ago. I really believe that it's an important message. Well, Jezebel, the infamous bloodthirsty wife of Ahab, did everything in her power to keep the truth of God from being heard. And we still see the Jezebel Spirit at work today in relationships, business, friendships, public office, and yes, even the church. Mm -hmm. It is the spirit of manipulation, control, envy, lust, and greed, just to name a few. So uh. for people <laughs> watching today and they're saying, I have never heard of the Jezebel spirit. Mm -hmm. What is it and how can we recognize it? Well, it, in a way, it's the antithesis of the spirit that John the Baptist had, which was the spirit of Elijah. Mm -hmm. And so Jezebel, it has a, there's a spirit that, that caused Jezebel to do what she did in the Old Testament. We read about Jezebel in, in uh, 1 Kings, the 17th mm -hmm. chapter, around 17, She was 18. really bad in the Bible. Uh, and her she husband, was a they sold themselves woman. to do evil. It was, it was way more evil than a lot of people think. For example, she was the daughter of a Phoenician priest right. who was also a king. Mm -hmm. And he, in being a priest, they served the god Baal and made temples to Baal. In temples, they also made sacrifices of children to Molech. Right. And so she was involved in child sacrifices. And then when she caused Ahab, or Ahab agreed in marrying her to build a temple to Baal in Samaria. Then uh, that temple became a place of child sacrifice to Molech in the temple of Baal. And this is all happening uh, right within what should have been a holy place. What should have been a holy place, exactly. And so for people watching, they're saying, well, now when you say the Jezebel spirit and there was a person named Jezebel, I mean, are those two different things? Is this a, is this a, a demonic spirit that controls? I mean, where does it come from? It, it is a demonic spirit, but it starts with a mindset or a mental stronghold. And Paul tells, tells us to cast down these mental strongholds that exalt themselves against the knowledge mm -hmm. of God. And so he, it starts with mental strongholds that skews the perspective of what this person believes God is saying and God is doing. So it makes them, and the, the first skew that it makes, it gives them, she has a feeling of, uh, of being overlooked, being a victim of the society, being a victim of, of men, being a victim of her circumstances. It's, mm -hmm. Everything is a problem but her. Mm 
And again, I, I say this, and I, I want to bring this out at the very beginning. The issue is not strong women, because strong women, strong women, God uses strong women. Deborah yeah. was, a, was a strong yeah. woman. Can we so, all say amen on that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So okay. we want to be very, very careful. And I'm looking at you right now. We want to be very, very careful not to kill the gifted right. in mm-hmm. misunderstanding what is really going on in the Jezebel spirit. The Jezebel spirit is about somebody who takes the strength that God has given them, misuses it to harm other people, uh, to gain uh, prominence, to gain position, to gain authority uh, at the expense of other people's lives, perhaps at the expense of other people's callings, at the expense of other people's anointings, and at the certainly at the expense of other people's emotions. So. A, Je- a Jezebel can can also be represented in a man. Right. A Jezebel can come to a man, but the man cannot live with that spirit for very long. Literally, it causes heart issues, heart problems, heart attacks and various heart ailments that take place in the man. The man, if they're going to go that way, typically will take on an Absalom spirit. So they they cry out justice. I will give Mm -hmm. you justice. You're not getting justice. You deserve something better than you're getting. I can get that for you. That's what an Absalom spirit does. So, but the Jezebel spirit, Absalom tries to set up his own kingdom by taking down all the kings. Jezebel tries to set up her own kingdom through the kings Mm -hmm. that exist to use and manipulate them. So they they become Ahabs, right? And so, well, the kings become Ahabs because they want something that they've tried before. Usually an Ahab, uh, who, a man who has the similarities that Ahab has, that man um, has tried to have authority before, has tried to exert uh, authority before, failed at that, and mm-hmm. now realizes for him to get where he wants to go, he needs somebody else to do what he can't do. Mm-hmm. And he sees she has that ability to do that. So I think you should say that again, because the men who are manipulated by this demonic spirit, the Jezebel spirit, mm-hmm. th- their motivation is to take down the king. Right. But for the women, it is to come up beside the king right. and to control the king. And in, in the book, I tell uh, three or four examples of the idea that as this advances in mm-hmm. this advanced format, then what ends up happening, they actually think that they can become the king's wife, the leader's wife, mm-hmm. the head's wife. Mm-hmm. And the wife then ends up through prayer, carnal prayer, and through other occultic measures as they mature, the wife ends up getting sick, the wife ends up having illnesses, the Mm -hmm. wife ends up being weak, the wife ends up, things begin to happen to the wife because what happens, the king or the leader and the Jezebel come into an agreement and there's power in agreement. They come into an agreement through their union and then the wife ends up getting, becoming, receiving the brunt of that. Mm -hmm. Now, that can change with repentance, that can change with recognition and and it has I know I know pastors that that have recognized what was going on and stopped that but if it's not caught if it's not exposed then then the problem can be severe I remember early days when we were in Montgomery Alabama there was a woman that operated with this and that was before I I really even had an understanding and uh, it was exactly as you say it was that control it was that manipulation and to get close to whoever God was anointing for yeah. that season. They, mm-hmm. they really want to be close to that. Right. that. That's important. Why is that? Well, they have a dream of what they want to become, and they realize that, that, well, let me back up. They have a dream of what they want to become, and they have fears that have to be overcome. So control and manipulation are used to overcome the fear. That way I can't get hurt if I'm in control of everything. Mm. I can't be wounded if I'm in control of everything. Mm. I may not be able to get there on my own because after all, I'm just a woman. That's what they'll kind of say. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they will um, exert their influence to to set up their own kingdom through the attachment mm-hmm. that they make. Mm-hmm. And so they'll decry, I'm just a woman, but at the same time they, they attach themselves to the leader or to what we call the king. Yes, and do they even realize that they're being controlled or manipulated by the spirit most of the time? Most of the time they do not recognize Most of the time they, they would not even have any idea. They would so not now, have any idea. Kendra, we were talking mm-hmm. about that, um, you know, and I don't care what work environment that you're, yeah. you're in. I mean, and, and even maybe more so in a Christian work environment, you're going to have pockets of this to, yeah. to pop up. Why is that? Well, in the Christian environment, you have prophetic people who can expose mm-hmm. them. Their greatest fear is exposure. 
Yeah. Because if they see through me, they can see what's going on in me, then they can stop me from my goal. Mm, so I, yeah. then what happens is I have to downgrade. I have to remove the prophetic voice, uh, remove their, um, their mm, favor. I have wow. to remove their believability. I have to get people to turn against the prophetic voice so that if they did spot wow. who I am, then the no, nobody will believe them. If I can wow. remove the believability, I can put them down. I can, I can you know, and they do it demurely. Like, uh, like we need to pray for John Paul. Uh, we need to pray for him because That's uh, exactly he's right. He's not as spiritual as he was. They, they come some, in a spiritual yeah, format. Yeah. Yes, they can, can you truly be a Christian and have a Jezebel spirit? You can at the beginning. But at the moment where it becomes, uh, as it says in Thy uh, to the church in Thyatira in Revelation 2, I gave her time to repent. Yes, you can, because repentance is there. Mm -hmm. But she would not. Therefore, at the moment, it becomes malicious. Yeah. So, and so it's not just a little bit of manipulation. It is, I'm going to, I am going, whatever happens to anybody along the way are just casualties. Uh, they, are, they, they, they deserve what they're going to get. And I'm going to become what I'm called to be because everything will be better if I'm in control. Right. So they they use, they justify the pain that they cause because of what I'm going to do when I get in power. Right, and and because they feel like they're aligning themselves for some so-called righteous cause. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, yeah. so in their yeah. mind, it's a righteous yeah. and cause. And it's a at righteous first. cause, so it doesn't matter right. all of the calamity, mm -hmm. even though it's not scriptural at all what they're no. doing. Mm -hmm. You, um, you ha you've encountered this and dealt with yeah, this several times. Yeah, and I guess the question that I have is. Um, I mean, obviously, I don't think that person would realize that they're being selfish because they're so wrapped up right. in their motive right. and being in power and control. But say that you are in that sort of situation where you see Jezebel spirit, flag, 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 help, help, mm -hmm. you know, and you go to your leadership and you try to expose that, but nothing's done. What would you say that that individual should do from that point on? What would be their next step? You know, that, that becomes the hard part. And basically, it comes to this. When, when you see that um, the, the malicious behavior is embraced by the leadership, then you have to leave. Okay. You see the malicious behavior is embraced by the leadership. Then you know that if I confront the leadership anymore, mm -hmm. that whether it's in your business or in the, in the political system yeah. or, or, or whatever, then, then uh, you have to back out and say, you know what, there's nothing I can do here and I can't be a part of what's going to happen here either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's hard that's to hear. Word. It <laughs> is hard to hear. What, what, in this whole issue, when it talks, I gave her time to repent and she would not. Basically, God says, I'm about to bring judgment. Mm -hmm. And you don't well, want to be there like when that comes down. And you don't want to be there when that happens. It's just like in the, yeah. in the New Testament where he says, you know, once you understand the truth and you still don't repent, then I'll turn you over to your own reprobate mind. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Romans it's 1. It's kind of like you exactly. brought this on and, well, now it's going to happen. And that's one of the things you have to be careful of when you are in leadership because they will sound an alarm mm -hmm. that will so mortify you for the moment where you think, oh, there's destruction and they're going to do this or that or the other. But in reality, as a leader, if, you don't, if you're not willing to stand up and expose that mm -hmm. and say, no, this yeah. is not right, then in the end, you're going to pay a higher price than what, whatever right. you feel for that moment right. of dismay. Right. See, Ahab wasn't willing to expose it. I, I, Elijah came to him. He confronted Elijah. Elijah said, okay, then it's not going to rain here for three and a half years or until I say it's going to rain again. Mm -hmm. And even after, even after Elijah uh, went to Mount Carmel and they had the, the great shootout, I call it, you know, where mm -hmm. make yeah. the two altars mm -hmm. and, and we're going to see who's God's God. Right. Even after that, Ahab wouldn't repent. He just went to, Je to Jezebel. I said, oh, by the way, Jezebel, is such a sad thing. He just killed 850 of your prophets, 450 prophets mm -hmm. of Ashroth and 400 prophets of Baal, and they're all dead, and Elijah did it. And so in essence, what are you going to do, Jezebel? Mm -hmm. So Ahab still didn't turn. Even when God sent down fire from heaven, mm -hmm. the Ahab didn't mm -hmm. turn from his evil ways. I cannot mm -hmm. even imagine what he was thinking, that he could have been so deceived. Mm -hmm. So how do we look out for this spirit when Table Talk returns the characteristics of Jezebel and what we can do to protect ourselves against it because I can tell you that the blood of Jesus is yes. stronger. Yes. We'll be right back. Yes. Well, have you encountered the Jezebel spirit? Those possessed by it believe they are never wrong, think they are the only ones that matter, and if anyone seems to threaten their false sense of entitlement, they will go after them. Sound familiar? Ooh. Sounds familiar for me. Yeah. Well, Jezebel might be in your midst, so how do we spot it? And more importantly, how do we handle them? I want to say right at the front that we love everyone. 
And one of the things I said during the break is that, you know, if not the grace of God in all of our lives, we could all fall prey to this. Right. So it's not like we're sitting here pointing a finger. We're right. saying we need to all be aware that um, if, if we don't use wisdom, if we don't stay healthy, if we don't keep the right attitude, the fruits of the Spirit, exactly. and our motivation be to help right. people, that we could fall into this. Yeah. You could fall into it. Absolutely. And as I said, the, the, our gift, within our gift lies a seed of our own demise. That coin can flip in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. and, and a Jezebel spirit can ensue with men. It's more likely to be an Absalom spirit, but in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. We can feel like we're the one to bring salvation to everybody because nobody else is doing it. We're the, we're the savior of the nation. And we want to know about it because we don't want to enable somebody else who is yeah. operating in, yeah. in that realm. Well, let's right. talk a little bit about the characteristics and then how do we handle, you know, Kendra, you ask a situation where we're having to deal with someone right. in the workplace and maybe leadership doesn't see. I can attest to the fact that I did not always see everything, you know, with 300 employees, you know, that, that goes on. But in time, God reveals mm -hmm. and, and shows you those things. Um, but characteristics, um, let's talk about to increase favor, zeroing in on those in charge. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's important and latching on to them. Right, because if, if I have a pain mechanism that I'm trying to avoid, if I have a fear mechanism, then the more control I have, the less likely I am to be hurt. Therefore, I, if I go up the ladder and have more and more and more mm. control, then I won't be hurt by anybody. In fact, I can do you all can the hurting. You can do the hurting, yes. Wow. Um, to appear spiritual. And right. seek recognition. So in order, in order for me to come into a place, the, the greatest thing that, that can cause problems to a Jezebel spirit is somebody with a prophetic gift that can see through and discern through the issues that are there. So therefore, I have to appear spiritual to everybody to throw them off of their belief that the prophetic person is right. Mm -hmm. I'm right. I will gradually put down the prophetic person mm -hmm. so I can be raised up as a spiritual leader. I remember there was a... Um, a lady here in this in this area that um, uh, was a friend of mine and I found out she was you know and this is the thing about it. a lot of times you're being you have someone in your midst and you don't even realize it you, and cuz you know I'm very trusting you know help me Lord but anyway um, but this I found out this lady that you know was supposed to be my friend was going around and calling my friends and saying you know we really need to pray for Jonah mm -hmm. mm. because, you know, you know, she may not be seeing this and the Lord has been showing me this mm -hmm. and that and the other. And we, right. and, and so Jesus. the friends called me and it's like, did you know mm. that? And I you, was did you so, know you need prayer? and those were friends <laughs> too, the, only a friend would do yeah, that. Yeah, only, oh, only yes. a friend, but is that, is that like a key characteristic? That's a key characteristic. They when they triangulate. go around you and sure. over you mm. to try to, oh, well. they, they triangulate, they can turn person A and person C against you and yeah. make them the only one. Person C says, this is the only friend I have. Person A says, I'm the only friend they have, mm -hmm. and you're not. See, and so I tell person A, wow. hey, Joni feels this way, this way, this way. And yeah. person B, oh, did you know that Joni feels this way and this way about you? And now yeah. all of a sudden, everybody's against Joni. I'm the hero yeah. because I exposed you. And it's nothing but manipulation and, manipulation and lies. Control. And that's exhausting, and by the way, to, to have to operate that way. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was like, I'm so, I, that would wear me out, yeah. all that energy. It, it actually you know? energizes the Jezebel that's because they receive oh, energy. Them. They're more extroverted wow. in nature, so They're, they receive energy from that human contact. Okay, um, here's a, a false humility. False humility because that way I can, I, can be, I can seem to be humble, I can seem to be contrite because that's spirituality. So I can act like, oh, well, you know, it's really nothing. But, I, it, but it's hard for them to hide, to hide that. On I mean, a long-term basis, yeah, it's very hard to hide basis, that. But short-term, yeah. it's not. And, and what their hope is that before anybody discovers them, they will have entrenched themselves and their roots will go out and touch everybody being entangled in the entire environment before the fruit is discovered. Oh, and this is like the Antichrist. This is one. It's that spirit. <laughs> it is. This is the one that um, you, when you said about those that operate with the prophetic gifting really recognize because a Jezebel spirit has impure motives. Right. Truth is more than fact. Fact, fact is fact, but truth includes motive for saying the fact. And so even in the book of Th uh, Revelation, so when it talks about Thyatira, Jezebel spirit in that church, it said two things one, that is really important right here. One is, I place no other burden on you than to get rid of this woman. 
Hmm. No other burden. Now, you, none wow. of the other churches had only one burden. Wow. They all had several issues they were supposed to deal with. But this, they had one the thing, one. get rid of the spirit mm -hmm. who seeks to control, who seeks to lead, who seeks authority, who seeks power. And if you do, I will give you authority. I will give you power amongst the nations. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on and it says this. And it says, because I judge the thoughts and the intents mm -hmm. of the heart. I yeah. alone and so what he's saying is, though there may be some level of gifting in this person, I know the motivation behind what they're saying. Wow. Well, don't go anywhere. We've got more Unmasking the Jezebel Spirit when Table Talk returns. Well, today we are exposing the characteristics of the Jezebel spirit and learning how to recognize the signs that someone is operating in that spirit. We've talked about several of them. Kendra, you wanted to ask specifically about this one. I did. I wanted to ask about the, char the characteristic when their words are the only words that matter. Their words. Their, their words. words. No right. one else's. Right. In, in essence, my word has become the equivalent of God. Therefore, it's equal to Scripture. And so that's, in essence, what, what they're saying. They may not want to admit that, but that's, in essence, the position that they're taking. So no matter what other prophetic person speaks, I've heard from God. They have yeah. not. No matter what other pastoral voice mm. it, it has input, I've heard from God. You haven't. You're not as spiritual as I am. Yeah. I am at the peak of spirituality. You need to listen no to what God says to me. No, no accountability. Because the only person I can be accountable to is God. Mm. <laughs> the marriage and family life is shaky. It's shaky, right. And lots of times what you'll find out in, in the Jezebel spirit, they are married to an Ahab. And so the Ahab ends up having something that they want. They have wanted Naboth's vineyard. So Jezebel says, I'll get it for you. She hires a group of people to, to spread lies about Naboth. They end up stoning Naboth. Ahab gets, gets uh, Naboth's vineyard, which is what he wanted. And Jezebel gets a higher rule and the land becomes afraid of her. Wow. Wow. Praying on the weak-minded and gathering a following. Right. What happens is very much like a wolf. They hunt. They will hunt in packs. But what they do is they seek out the the weakest person, mm. the person that has a background that says, "I'm afraid to make a decision," mm. and the Jezebel says, "I'll make your decision for you." You don't really know what to do spiritually. I can help you. So they kind of travel mm. in packs. So they'll, they'll, they can travel in packs, but they want a, to gravitate a pack around them too. So if I can get other weak people to follow me, I can become their voice. I can become their thought. I can think for you. Mm. One of the things that we were talking about during the break is that there are pastors' wives mm -hmm. who have been affected. Right. Um, speak to, to, to those if pastor's wives, if you would, just a moment. I really believe the Lord has something he wants to say to you today. A lot of pastor's wives will go through this because what happens is the Jezebel spirit will start praying against you. They will start asking others to pray against you. They will get on the telephone and they'll begin to say things like, you need to pray. Let's say the, your husband's name is George. And perfectly, there's nobody out there with the name of George <laughs> like this, but just say George. So <clears throat> they'll, uh, they'll call and they'll say, to call a person and say, you and I, we need to form an agreement to pray for George because George is going through a very difficult time and is having trouble discerning what to do. So you'll start, they'll start praying together and they'll build up a prayer chain and a prayer event. Nothing is intercession. It's absolutely important. In fact, it is what probably will save the pastor's wife, save you if you have a great intercessory prayer group. But what ends up happening is this unholy strategy then allows them to form a, a, a power of agreement against you. And now all of a sudden, they go from praying that you would become more spiritual and have more insight. They begin to praying that, well, you're actually holding your husband back. We need yeah. to pray because so-and-so is holding their husband back. They're becoming a weight around the neck of their husband. So we need to pray that, that somehow God would just kind of take her out of the way so their husband can kind of raise to the top. And then it progresses from there. And it's hard to believe, but it's happened countless number of times yes. where they actually pray, you know what? What ha needs to happen is the wife needs to die so that I can take my place alongside of this great man of God and he and I can form a holy golden union and a seed, a righteous seed, a child will come out of this and that child will be the greatest revelatory or prophetic or apostolic voice mm. on the face of the earth. Now, it sounds exaggerated, but that literally is how the thinking goes hundreds and hundreds of times. 
That, it was such deception around everything you just said. I mean, yes. for anyone who knows scripture, everything you just said, for, for people to think that way, yeah. it's just... Mm -hmm. But it doesn't start out that way. It yeah. starts out very, very demure. Yeah. You know, we need to pray because the pastor's wife just isn't as spiritual as mm. she used to be. Well, such an exhausting topic, unmasking the Jezebel spirit. I want to encourage you to get John Paul's book to learn more about what we've talked about today. We're out of time. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, John Paul, for talking about this very Thank important you. subject. And I want to say to those of you listening, listen, God has not given us the spirit of fear. No. So this is not anything to be fearful about. And um, we, we mentioned earlier the blood of Jesus is stronger than any of this. Amen. And so um, do not be afraid, but do be informed. And if you need prayer today, or if, you, if your pastor's wife is going through something like this, or your pastor, or someone you know and love, then call and let us pray for them today. Prayer is so, so very important. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today. This has been a Daystar Television production. All right, so continuing on the next day. After the pod of the stars, well, today I couldn't get out there because uh, my time was mainly taken up in uh, a prayer and spiritual warfare. I found out, you know, I just, a few things you learn. One, uh, someone I work with, he said, few days ago, he felt uh, like he had a couple days where he couldn't move, and uh, he, 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 uh, he was just incapacitated. There was no uh, disease, no rhyme or reason, but it happened to coincide with the two days where I was going through the same thing, and I couldn't understand it. I thought, well, it must be lack of sleep. You know, but no, it was a profound fatigue. I thought maybe it was the supplements. And then I realized, oh my God, it's them. Yeah, it's formal witchcraft. Now I recognize it because I've been through that before. I prayed heavily. Well, I mean, yes, you send it back. Yeah, all that. But that's besides the point. I'm, you know, I, I go through these kinds of attacks since 2002. Um, you know, pretty much nonstop the whole time. So there's nothing new here for me, except that the effects of it at times can be debilitating, and even if you're unsuspecting, kill you. People talk about gang stalking and all that, well, it's, it's part of that. You're targeted, and those you love are targeted, those you work with are targeted. It's a mass targeting. And um, it's always the same thing. These people are very petty. They want you just to uh, eat you-know-what and die. <laughs> That's all. Fail at everything you do. Have everything that you're... Uh, working on and attempting to work on, come to not, come to a stop. And they actually got their way for a couple of days. The weird thing was, having it confirmed by someone else just yesterday, I didn't realize they had a bad week last week, but, it, but the two days in question were the same as my own. Okay, so every August, you know... It's always the same thing. Every August, they seem to really get ramped up. Okay, so uh, prayers of protection, yes. Uh, especially prayers to... Now, I know some people take it to an extreme and claim they've killed witches. And indeed, they have. I've, I've seen the evidence of that. And I'm not going to go into the kind of warfare they employ, but... I'm not really called to be that kind of warrior, although I don't mind someone praying for me that thwarts it, but it's very important that when it's sent back, and that's time seven, by the way, but when it's returned, that they understand what they did and that it was wrong and that, and that, and, and that it has backfired 
And that's a very important aspect of it. What they did was wrong, and what they did is backfired. The Lord has our backs, but he, he, he doesn't do our spiritual warfare for us. See what I mean? He can't, I mean, we still have to be actors in this, in this movie. And so he, um, you know, he can't, you know, if, if you're not going to pray and you're going to sit there and be pummeled and you're not going to return it and do what you've got to do by the power and blood of Jesus Christ, that name above all other names and that name, the only name of true power. And that has the, the power to break all curses, hexes, spells, hoodoo, voodoo, you name it, because they throw it all. I mean, at one point, um, you know, because I'm, I used to do things like I would travel in the spirit to their location. And then, for example, I detected this one woman in Australia. She had a, a pyramid cage inside a pentagram with a, a figure of me in there. And, um, you know, was doing her being on this music forum, but then she was doing her witchcraft on everyone there. She would go by the name Ancient Mother and things like that. And when you see Ancient Mother, uh, excuse me, a, a red flag should be going up, yes. Now, there's no Ancient Mothers allowed around me. Thank you very much. Stay the F away. Unless you want to have a really, really bad day. Unless you want to be seen and tagged. Once you're tagged, and the funny thing is, this, this, this time these attacks are coming from someone that's already tagged, already cursed. And they're just figuring, well, I guess if they could take us out, and it is us. And then I've also prayed protection around my circle of friends and, and people I know, and, and all, you know, because they may be unaware of this. But the, the whole thing of being tagged is what happens is, um, it's a good thing, actually, because it's, it's just like you tag an animal in the jungle. You know, they're, they're, they're under watch at that point. Um, but the other animals, in this case, will distance themselves. And, you know, uh, if they look at their lives honestly, this is a chance for them to do that, to see that their, that their plans and their witchcraft and their curses have come to naught, that hating other people and throwing curses and doing, you know, wicked spells and doing rituals in, in, in favor of hurting the other guy, or the target of their, of their rituals. You know, I mean, anyone can look it up online about you know, how they go about their business. None of this works against children of the most, most high, ultimately. I mean, it works to a certain extent, like for example, John the Baptist lost his head, things went that way. But the Lord, if you look at it another way, the Lord pulled him home, right? It was time for him to diminish because Jesus had to Right? It was time for John the Baptist to diminish, as he said, and he did, and leave the scene. And he, he had done his job wonderfully. Jesus called him Elijah. So they said, well, Elijah owes a death, and maybe he paid one. But then he'll be back as the two witnesses, the one who shut off the water in California. I had that revelation yesterday that the water in California shut off as representative of Elijah being here, shutting off the water. What do you think of that? You know, it's, it's, it's strange. I just got that feeling really strong. And I wonder that if Elijah has to be here in the form of a person consciously saying, I think I'll shut that water off over there. Or if it's just the water shutting off in California is a, is a rebuke and a judgment. You know against uh, the people running California and what they've done to it, which is run it right into the ground. I mean, it's almost criminal what they've done. It's completely immoral what they've done. What they continue to do to rape the people there is just, it's, it's, it's horrifying and disgusting. How could any lot normal citizen in this country accept what they've done in California to the people? How could you? Unless you're a zombie, which is obviously what the about 90% of the population in California are zombies. So, and, and even the zombification of those people has been done on purpose. I mean, if you really want to look at some witchcraft, there you go. Because witchcraft is, the, is involved in making people zombies. Witchcraft is involved in television programming. Programming through the media. It's, it's all connected. Anyway, these witches who have, the ones I'm talking about have 
covens and they have you know they have their their spells and their rituals and their and their 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 ancient traditions and their ancient mothers and ancient this and that. Oh, it's all about the big mother. It's a, one of the biggest witchcraft spells ever put on people was the film Avatar. Total witchcraft. That's what it was all about. And, um, you know, and all connected to the ancient tree. And then we have the end, we're going to worship the rocks and everything has consciousness and it's all so alive and connected. Isn't that a wonderful way to live, Mr. James Cameron, you genius, you? And I say anyone who worships the created rather than the creator is an absolute idiot and buffoon. An imbecile. A fool. And that's all I have to say about that, Cameron. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, you coward. Running off to New Zealand, you, you hypocrite. He immediately starts a school down there for raising the consciousness of children, okay? What, what a... <laughs> thank God he's, he's, you know, maybe it's a good thing he left Malibu, right? Maybe it's a good thing. Now he can be a blight on New Zealand. What an absolute um, evil hypocrite that man is. And, uh, you know, I, I've... I was so offended by Avatar, and then the way they portrayed the military as a bunch of dumb right wing, you know, all this kind of, they're just stupid guys, you kill people, you know, like that. And then they're so sophisticated, all connected to the ancient slavery. And what he's advocating there through his mind control meme and movie is the slavery of the entire world. Then when things get rough here at home after he's benefited so much by living in the United States, making more money than anybody being in a very top, top tier elite group, he runs away to New Zealand because it's getting rough here, leaving everyone else to fend for themselves after, you know, having his say in ruining, you know, California. And that's what the liber liberals do. They ruin a place. Now they're fleeing to Texas. After ruining California, the next stop is Texas. And they keep on and going. The most interesting thing to me is um, another witch that's in the news, Hillary Clinton. And the, uh, the, the vicissitudes of that going back and forth. And, you know, the criminality of, of the utter prison sentence criminality of wiping her server clean professionally when the firestorm hit. That is com that's concealment of evidence. That's, there's a number of things wrong with that legally, okay? That woman should be in jail, period. And uh, anyone that votes for her is, a, is, is pure evil and should not be anywhere. I mean, that, we've fired people for less. <laughs> yeah, and if you say you like her, there's something wrong with you. But there's this, that kindred witchy spirit thing, that Jezebel spirit, right? Yeah. Around here, look, around here we go through it. The, the, we've seen spells, actually, and, and incantations written on the sidewalk in chalk here. And there's all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, this is heavy duty. Uh, New Mexico is the, is the, I would say, the Super Bowl of witchcraft. And it did, doesn't matter what kind, whether you have the Native American, you know, from the Pueblos, the shapeshifters, I call them, and uh, they can fly into your room and try to give you a heart attack or whatever to the, uh, to the general, um, you know, sort of pagan-esque um, women that uh, have kind of seated themselves here, ensconced themselves, and uh, to all the others. You, you see all the stickers, you know, the goddess stickers and the rest of it. You know, you see them, um, and they're kind of beating up cars. Don't let those beaten up cars fool you. Yeah, they're going for power, not money. Whole different thing. But you've got a lot of spiritual intensity here. You've got the penitente, guys who put themselves up on crosses uh, to, to show their faith in Jesus. Um, you know, basically a, a light form of crucifixion. Some have died doing that. We have the pilgrim, pilgrimages to uh, Chimayo, the, uh, the, the old church where people feel they get miraculous healings. We have the witchcraft of many different stripes. We have all the, uh, the, the uh, Europeans who went and gave all their their money to the Bhagwan when they were kids, Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, they all ended up moving here. 
Um, you have all the Tibetan Rinpoches and monks and things when when they fled Tibet and they came to Santa Fe, New Mexico. I mean, we, we, we're fraught with, <laughs> with um, spiritual intensity. It, this place attracts all that. So when I get, you know, people doing their thing and throwing stuff, you know, you got to realize I live in, and, and, you know, they see who I am. I mean, there's no, I don't hide. I don't hide at all. And, you know, I know you and you know me and, and, and it's just like that, you know. And so, so it's, you, you get and out of all this witchcraft and, and this world system, the satanic world system, you get the, the gang stalking. All right. And um, it's, 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 it's very, very magical, very, very supernatural the way things happen. But if you get to be acclimated to what you're looking at, then you realize that when people manifest, they come together in a hive, they're not there. It's what's in them that's doing that. So when you need to address them, you address that thing that's in them. They need an exorcism, friend. That's what you're dealing with. Most of the time, it's not coordinated in some, you know, some office building somewhere. It's, it's, it's happening naturally. And, um, you know, it's, it, it, the other thing that I think you'd all agree with me that the gang stalking aspect has gone mainstream. It's, it's one group against another group against, you know, so it's, it's much easier now because it's much easier to see. But still the weird spooky stuff goes on, right? And, um, you know, the, as far as the, the other stuff, the electronic harassment and the rest of it, okay. When I was talking about the beam last, remember the beam last week and then I had confirmation, you know, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, there was the beam and then, but a couple days later came that day of incapacitation where there was just no energy. This happened before with the spell thrown. That was, um, that takes the energy so you can't really move. It's, it's really a terrible thing, but you know, you get back on your feet with Jesus Christ and that's, that's all you can do. You know, the Lord never says we're not going to get knocked down. He's just saying, be wise as to what it is so you can rebuke it, return it. Lord rebuke it, right. The Lord, the power of Jesus Christ, and by that name, I send it back. So that they would know who sent it back. So that they would know where it came from. So that they would be able to take responsibility for their failure and their utter failure. The only way they can really make it work is if they just get physically violent with you and cheat. Anyway, um... When you're dealing with lambs of God, basically what happens is people get tagged and they get mad. I mean, there's these ancient things and then people, they, they watch you, you know, they watch you over years and they get mad if you're having, you know, if you have any, I'm talking to Govind about this, you know, people watch him and they say if he's, if he's happy at all, they get mad. You know, it's like, yeah, that's, they're on the witchy side of things, okay? So when they, when you're happy, they're mad. When you're successful, they're, they're super angry. They're throwing, um, their hatred is consume them and they're just throwing, you know, and they don't understand why it doesn't work. That it works every time. They never tell anyone what they are, who they are. They go to do all their things in secret. They have their, their, you know, bevy of women or whatever that participate with them. And they go do this and that spell and they put things in people's houses and they, they have all this stuff they do. It's gener these are generational witches I'm talking about. They just can't understand why they can't have any success with us. The answer is, well, they're not totally without success. There are consequences, you know, with people. And, um, but, the, the, you know, if you do get shot, you get shot. You know, I mean, if they do something and, and something sticks, it sticks. You get rid of it, but still there may be a scar. Okay, so they do have make an impact. It's not like they do nothing. But when you're talking about a man's soul, they do nothing. When you're talking about a man's destiny in Christ, they do nothing. Lord never said it wasn't going to be warfare with slings and arrows and people getting wounded here and there. He never said it was going to be like that. You know, we still have to do the time for the crime, whatever that is. And, uh, you know, we got to fight it out. But when they are tagged... It means that um, it doesn't work anymore, and that's that's the thing they don't say. They go, well, maybe if I try harder, if I maybe if I start, you know, get get some, you know, get you know, do some live abortions or something, you know, if I really spill a lot of blood, if I do something, it's got to work this time. Not if it gets returned, 
And then when it's returned, of course, their lives are ruined. And they know what it is. And then they, 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 they pull themselves together after getting knocked down severely by their own hand. Their luck running out, their finances running out. That's another thing that happens to these people. But, you know, most of them have beaten up cars. They don't care about finances. They don't care about re re returned curses. They don't care. They keep going. Even if their lives have completely come apart. Because their hatred is so strong that anyone that doesn't conform to their power, they feel they have the jurisdiction and the authority to throw whatever they want at the, the intended target for the intent, of course, of ruining their lives, all justified by the fact that they're not playing by the rules, therefore they're, in, they're, in, they're outside uh, the, uh, the game, therefore they are illegal in some way, and therefore they need to be policed and, and, and reeled in. If they're not going to comply and bow down to that situation, uh, then they will be destroyed, and they, they have every right the authority and the power and the magic to destroy anyone who will not comply. Now, if you comply, the problem with that is you become a slave and you might have fun running around the track when you're young, you know, well, you can have a martini and you can go have a little 50 yard line ticket and you can do some fun things. But I mean, ultimately that runs out, I told you that. Look at these desperate women. They're throwing all these curses and, and they, they, they can't pay their bills. And as they get more impoverished, you know, they're mad at God is what it is. You know what I mean? And they throw it at, you know, God, anyone that's close to them, you know, they throw it there. But instead of looking in the mirror and taking responsibility and saying, you know what? I better knock this stuff off because this is really, I look at my, my kids I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I look, I, I look at my um, family; it's falling apart. I look at uh, this; I look at that. Everything's falling apart. Obviously, you know, um, uh, my life is ruined. You know, and they get older. When you get see what they understand is this: when they get older, no one cares about them anymore, and their power naturally goes. So when they're younger, they have all this power. Anyway, it all backfires on them and then it turns into a curse on them and that curse is then put onto their children. So the thing they were throwing at other people winds up on their child. The very manifestation that they were trying to manifest through their witchcraft. It winds up on their children and then on their children. You see, folks? It, 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 nothing goes unnoticed. It all gets paid for. No, I mean, I'm not here to have just an easy time of it. I mean, it, you know, I'm, it, it's, it's, I have to say that when you're talking about subjects like this, so you, you know, I'm sure this talk will attract a whole bunch more flurry. But I'm not going to shut up about it. Just, I know people that won't even put their picture on the internet because they're afraid that the witches will get it and do their thing. I haven't done that. I know they're doing their thing. I, I, this tests my faith in the Lord. And the Lord has been good every time. I'm not saying it's without scars. I have scars. I have traumas from the, from the you know, childhood and things that happened. And, you know, because I was just, you know, I'm just a spiritual person. I'm just kind of like spiritual meaning, you know, tending toward God. You know, that's just my natural way. And that way of witchcraft and being a slave under the Jezebel system and all that, that's the opposite direction of, the, of what I was made to be. There's nothing I can do to change that. That's just God makes one this way, one that way. You, there's nothing you can do about it. So, you know, being that, then I've got to do the best I can, given that I'm a son of the Most High God. And, and that, you know, it's not everyone can be that, I guess. But through default, that's where I wound up. In other words, I didn't wind up there. It was unacceptable. No, no, so there I went through a period of trying to conform in every which way I could in high school and after that, and there was just nothing doing. It just wasn't going to work out. You know, I'm just not the type, the type, the type. There'd be people coming around here every once in a while trying to put me under their, you know, wing, i.e. slavery, 
And they felt they were getting away with it for about two or three days, and all of a sudden the whole thing would blow up, and then they'd wonder, what the hell happened there? It's like, you can't do it. It's, it's God will break it up. You know, see what I mean? If I don't break it, he's always there. He's, he, you, you, get, you, get, you have an appointed thing you're going to go to, they're waiting for you, then all of a sudden you get steered the other way. It's, it's, it's just the way it is, man. You know, God keeps his people intact. But you do not mess, you mess with one of us, you mess with the entire kingdom of God. That is the one who created all things, including you, which is, you mess with that, it's like putting a dagger in your own heart. You throw a spell for someone to come into health and financial ruin, you come into your own ruin and financial and health ruin. You throw a curse to curse someone with, with some infirmity, you yourself get visited with the infirmity, or your children do, or your animals do. It comes right back. You've just cursed your child. That's what's eventually happened. You've cursed your child. Your marriage breaks up. Your finances go down. I would think that after all that, which is, you would say, you know what? I don't think we're going to win here. No, in a war against God, you can't win. That's correct. When you pick on, the, see, here's the thing. You're tagged. When you get tagged, that tag doesn't come off of you for the rest of your life. See, you can go mess with people all you want out there. There's, you know, no consequences to you. Do this, they stumble and fall. Do this, they get fat. Do this, they get old. Whatever, you, you know, what? they lose their money. They, they, everything's a tragedy every time. You know, it's just over and over. You know, you just keep it up, right? No consequences. You just keep running and gunning like that, ruining people's lives. and Because that's all you do. You don't do anything unless it's selfish, like I want this person to fall in love with me or whatever. So you do something to try to cause that. And of course, that winds up being a tragedy as well. But uh, ultimately, then there are people you don't mess with. See, it's like in the garden, there's, you know, like in this garden here, this God's garden, really, because we don't, you know, it's, it's, it takes care of itself in New Mexico. We have snakes. We have some wonderful bull snakes that do a great job. We, we need more. I, I had one in my house recently because he knew there was a mouse back behind this credenza thing we have. And, I'm, and I very carefully got him out and got him, you know, so he was happy because we need those. This was a baby. You know, they get to be huge. You know, they, they, they'll lie across the road, be across the whole road. Unfortunately, people run them over because they're idiots around here. But that's just, that's just America. Um... Well, they might think it's funny. And all you have to do is drive around here at night with some good lights. You know, I've, I've got like on my truck, I've got extra high power lights. And you see rats and mice littering the entire place. We need more snakes. So we got those kind of snakes. We've got garter snakes. We've got all kinds of snakes that eat rodents, you know. Plus we have owls that eat rodents. And we have a lot of pack rats as well. And we have... Uh, and the pack rats are smart. I mean, they're really smart animal. I don't want to kill them. But, you know, we have to live here too, you know, so there has to be a balance. And this year we've had less snakes. But every once in a while then, and especially in the Southwest, there's a rattlesnake. Now, you can do what you want with these other snakes. You can run them over. You can chop them up, grab them. They're not going to hurt you. But then all of a sudden you touch that rattlesnake, you get bit and you get killed. It's that simple. In God's kingdom, you can mess with this one, you mess with that one, you get away with it, you get away with it. And then there's uh, a son of the Most High God, you know, just among the rest of the people. Doesn't look any particularly different from anyone else. And you throw something on him, and guess what? Your life is ruined. The answer is after that, or her, uh, you know, or them. The answer after that is not to double down on it later, but to realize that something has changed and to take an assessment of your own life. And hopefully you give your life to Jesus Christ and, 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 and go the opposite of where you've been going because it hasn't worked. Look, I see them here in town. And this town is filled with, it's wall-to-wall -wall witches, wall-to-wall. -wall. It's like Sedona. Remember those girls that were the alien girls? Right, the one in LA and the one, did you see that video? I posted it, I didn't post, I commented on it. 
Bridget and her, she's just the latest crop of beautiful young girls being abducted and in a great experiment to create these wonderful hybrids that are peaceful, loving humans. You know, those girls. Witches. Sedona. It's the same thing. They're witches. Well, what are they talking about on those ships with those aliens? and Witchcraft. That's right. Everything they talk about is witchcraft if you know what you're looking for, if you know what it is. Right? It's an ancient, ancient thing given by the fallen angels to the witches so that the, the, the sisterhood would run the world. So what we have here on earth is a matriarchy that rules the world. And, oh, I mean, they make it look like it's a man's world and all that. They're behind all the men. They, they're the ones that get them. Oh, it's been like that for a long time, but I noticed a shift. You got one of the head witches in the world, Hillary Clinton, having trouble, it seems. Seems her power is a bit, some, somehow she seems a bit tagged. I, I don't know. I, I, I've, I'm, she's not my, uh, my assignment, so I, I don't know. No, you don't want to be my assignment because then you're dealing with some, you know, I mean, well, take, be so at your own risk because now I'm on high alert. Now, if I have to ramp it up and it has to get messier, then it will get messier. And I know what happens when, they, when their spells don't really work well. Like, then they want to get physical. They want to meet you. They want to say they're a Christian. They like to come visit or whatever. But they're really just trying to get into your house to leave something or take something or, you know, get some, you know, get, get some personal thing of yours so they can, because the thing isn't working. So they got to get, they got to take it another step. And then if they really get mad, they'll just shoot you and say, see, it worked. <laughs> then they go to prison. Then they can continue on in prison after their life is ruined to ruin, to attack other people and ruin their life even more. Every time they put a spell on someone, their life gets diminished, their soul gets cut up one more time. It's like having uh, promiscuous sex. You know, eventually um, your soul gets divvied up in a million, million different directions because sex is sacred. So it gets messed with, you know, and the thing you have to do, same thing with pornography, by the way or anything like that that opens a door. Even when there's witchcraft spells, you have to go, well, what have I done sin-wise that's opened a door? No, I'm not condemning anyway. I mean, whatever you've had with your, you know, this life is hard. I mean, you got the flesh to contend with. I'm not saying people are not gonna sin and have their, um, you know, their things they do. I'm, I'm not condemning that. I, I mean, I've, 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 I'm saying, well, I'm condemning the idea of sin. It's rebellion toward God and it causes consequences. Sometimes what the witchcraft will do, what they'll do is try to get you, they'll, they'll know your proclivity for sin and they'll throw something on you to get you to do it more, whatever it is you're trying to stop doing. And we're all trying to stop sinning. So from people having affairs, looking at pornography, doing this, doing that, stealing, criminality, all that, that too. It's all part of the, all these things, doesn't matter what they are, they all have one common thing, uh, one thing in common. They all weaken us and make us susceptible to the control of the powers that be here, the, 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 the earthly powers that be, the satanic powers that be, i.e. to make us closer to slavery. What happens when we button all that up and we, we, we do better with our sins and we put those away, we strive more toward the Lord, you know, in every way, which is also treating the body as a temple. There's a lot of things, you know, I mean, there's, there's a million things. But when we're striving toward the Lord, what happens? We get strength in our denying of the sin, in our, in our refusal to sin. Just like when you fast, you get strength, right? Through not sinning, through shutting those doors. You become intact, you become a fierce warrior, but you get closer to God and then there's the power. And you don't have to go around defensively wondering if anyone's throwing anything at you. You don't have to do that. You just, you come into a place where it's just automatic. It's like an angel. It's just almost automatic, you know, it's like stuff just isn't going to happen to you. It's all immediate. It's all connected. There's no delay. And therefore, um, you would walk right through the world without, you know, pretty much unscathed. But that kind of power, that mastery, if you will, it's not really mastery. It's, it's just, a, 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 you know, a yearning for God. And then, you know, you inherit the things of Psalm 91, Psalm 2, you know, all the Psalms and all the Proverbs that pertain to this issue and all the strength therein, 
You know, I know people that would go on a Daniel fast. I sort of started one today. I have made a uh, a chili. And I just started like an impromptu thing. You know, I got a can of uh, organic beans. I think they were pinot beans. And I, and I got a uh, some organic broccoli that was frozen, but it was really good for frozen. You know, that one in there. Some peas and a little corn and... Um, some uh, stewed tomatoes from Palmy, uh, and some really good, uh, really dark red New Mexican chili. And uh, and then I noticed it was like you know when I was stirring it up and you know getting it getting it going, I noticed it was like wow, there's enough here to last a couple, you know, a few days. And I didn't really put much in there. It's funny how it expands, and then and then. You know, really nice kind of Maui onions that, you know, two Maui onions. Uh, uh, I think four small potatoes got cut up and put in there. So it's, it's, there's no oil. There's not much in the way of, there's some seasonings. There's garlic in there. There's no um, dairy. There's no meat. I mean, I'm like, wow, this is like right out of uh, what my daughter was trying to get me to follow this Dr. McDougall guy. And um, he has a great chili he sells in the, in the in the market. That he's his advocate is starch is you know the anyway it's a, like a vegan thing. So, um, but anything like that, any discipline like going to the gym, you know, uh, doing a fast, doing a Daniel fast, which is not fasting from food, but a discipline. So you keeping away uh, you know things that you normally would have, closing the door to to sins that you're doing. You know one. One of the worst sins we do, folks, which is akin to witchcraft. I mean, most of these witches that become well-practiced or generational, they're used to just throwing a curse with their minds and seeing a result without having to go through the old Sturm and Drang of, you know, doing the pentagram and the circle and the, and the pentagram and then conjuring the demon and sending the thing with the demon to go hurt you or what, you know. It, they, they're used to, they get kind of lazy in that they can just do it with their minds. And then they run into a child of the Most High. And you know who you are out there. And I know I'm just talking to the choir because I know you've had the exact same experiences I've had. You know, and you know how hair it can be. I mean, it can be, you know, life and death. I mean, and then when they get mad, then they start poisoning your food and stuff. That's all part of it, too. You know, when, when their little hoodoo voodoo thing doesn't work, then they step it up with some poison. Yeah, I mean, you don't want them around you. And they no, you don't know who they are because they're never going to say anything about it. But if you start seeing black candles lit in front of you and things like that, and uh, if that's your housekeeper or whatever, I would say it's time to move that one on down the road. You, you know what I'm saying? Or someone you work with at work or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the friend of mine came to me with this problem. There was somebody that became a receptionist at his uh, his firm, and uh, she was just totally, you know, one of those kind of people that would just stir up the whole office, you know, wreck it. And he just was vexed as to what to do. I, I was pretty simple. She's a witch. She's going to fail. It's a, a lot of the guys that are godly. They have Bible studies, you know amongst themselves and it's you know pretty good outfit so uh, eventually that very thing happened she was uh, uh, you know she just moved on but sometimes you know even a, a snake a rattlesnake will come and you know sit there on the porch and then eventually moves on you know she eventually just moved on as I predicted she would and uh, but yeah she would stir up division between pe between the men right oh very I mean, I don't even know. They have a talent. She was just born with that talent. They do the same thing in your churches, by the way. The churches are actually run by these people. The witches run the churches in America. They run their husbands, who are the pastors. They <laughs> oh, they do it all in Jesus' name. I'd say the most, you know, some of the more nasty things that, that I've been through were people that were uh, praying in Jesus' name, but they were throwing witchcraft all in Jesus' name, and, you know, they were, they were, you know, they were getting, dividing people and, and causing troubles, and, and you could see they were throwing stuff in the spirit, and they were traveling in the spirit to come beat you up and things like that, you know, and um, I used to do that. There was uh, uh, these witches around here that were trying to, you know, get me into their, uh, 
under their thumb. Brother Tom has called, I've told you about this several times, but it's worth repeating again. Brother Tom has called me to warn me, and I said, nah, bro T, I'm already, I totally understand what you're saying. And he's like, you know, you, you, you didn't say yes to anything, did you? And I said, no. This is something I didn't tell you. He said, you didn't say yes to anyone, did you? And I said, no, I did not say yes to anyone. Of course not. He goes, good. But during those days, I had to actually travel the spirit, throw people out the window, all kind. you know, it was, it was violent, violent in the spirit, violent. And um, we have the ability to do that. I don't know how I know how to travel in the spirit. I don't know where I learned that, but I've seen Paul's done that and other people in the Bible, so I guess it's, I don't seek to do it. But in this case, I was... You know, the, the, I had the wrath of them because I wasn't complying, you know what I mean? So they were um, definitely wanting to go at it. Well, you know, let me just put it, the upshot of it all, they law, they, they, if you survive, they lose. In other words, you don't win, they just lose. You know, Donald Trump survived this whole onslaught, and because he survived, he won, or they lost, if you will. Even though he might not have won anything, they lost. Uh, in this case, there were three of them. And, um, you know, by extension, they have covens and all kinds of stuff around here. You know, really, really nasty. Well, not only did they lose at that time, all of it got broken and broken forever. Meaning it never got going again. It was just like you cleaned out the, uh, you know, we cleaned out the, 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 the nest of vipers and that was it. And it Never had another problem again since that time. And they never coalesced together again. And people actually moved out of this neighborhood who were part of the same issue. They just feel like, and I've talked with people about it. I said, what is it about witches that where they feel like, you know, and, and this gal, I think she's been in and out of the witchcraft or it's been in her family. She says, well, you know, they're, they're, especially when they're young, they're pretty girls, right? And they just decide who, you know, they, they, they treat people like trading cards and they decide who they're going to get. And of course that clued me in is when, when this gal was saying at the dinner table that my friend, the poet was out there on the beach wandering around, I don't know, Topanga, Malibu somewhere. Who knows? Maybe he was homeless. I don't know. But she was going, we're going to get him. Okay. That's a witchcraft statement. She's a witch. We're going to get him. All right. Um, they decide who they're going to get. That word get is very much in their vocabulary. And they decide who's going to get who under their control. And they do it so that you never know you're under their control. You see what I mean? It's all about control and mind control, especially. That's 99% of the witchcraft that goes on. And then, of course, the more exotic stuff, the spells, the sacrifices, uh, you know, spilling of blood, um, sexual ritual, blah, 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 the rest of, the, of this whole boring litany of their stupid uh, lives. My, they'll sacrifice their own children to move up the ladder. So the question becomes, if you really want back in the game, if they're tagged, sometimes they'll actually become violent or try to do something violent, even hurt their own family to boost themselves to get back in the game. Let me explain something. When you're tagged, you're never get, I shouldn't even say all this stuff, but if you're tagged, you're never getting back in the game. You're done. You got two moves you can make. One, you can die, or two, you can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and don't look back, and, and go on with the Lord. And, but if you keep trying to do the witchcraft over and over, your children, your um, family, you know, will break up. You will run into, you know, poverty. You will run into infirmity. All the things that you throw come back on you at that, because you have no protection. Tag simply means you protect. Uh, what do you do to get tagged? Does the person doing the tagging do the tag? No. You just pick the wrong person and you're tagged. The person doesn't even have to know about it. A lot of times they don't. They just have God's protection. And oh, well, you made a mistake. Well, the only thing you can do now is repent. And I suggest, that's the reason I'm having this podcast in case you're tuning in, uh, repent. Don't write me like, oh, it's all glorious down with Jesus. It's going to take you years to sort this out. Then you write me. Write me five, six years from now. Not now. I made that mistake when people are new believers. They I threw off all that witchcraft and all the paganism and all the stuff. I'm with Jesus now. Zef, what do you think? It's like, you know, let's, let's have an email conversation. It's like, no, thank you. Your problem is that the last thing you do is to write a man, to get involved with a man and, and, and in, a, in an email relationship. We're just not going to do that. 
the thing you need is to is that you're going to be tried and tested. How strong is your faith? How strong is your commitment to the Lord? How 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 um, forthright are you when they all turn against you? What are you going to do? I've been vetted, tested, retested, retested. I've I haven't been as good as Job or as good as Jesus. I admit. I mean, nowhere near as good as Jesus, but not as good as Job. I should have been. I've gotten better at it, but it's been a process. I've complained and I've questioned God, yeah, and I've, I've gone even further than that, and I'm, I'm ashamed of it, I'm embarrassed of it, but oh well, it happened, and I just, all I can do is repent and go on. I know I belong to him because who, where else do I go for help? Who else do I talk to about my problems? Who else, you know, loves me, really? If I go to friends, then they are there, you know, God bless them. They just give me their opinion. That's not good enough. I need an absolute direction, don't you? Opinion, I mean, that's not going to, a lot of times when I give an opinion to someone, it's just a projection of my own problem myself. And it doesn't really even apply. If that person takes it to heart and goes and does my opinion, it may not lead to the result they're looking for. So I got to keep my powder dry, not shoot my mouth off so much, and maybe, maybe, you know, say, okay, let's pray. And I think that's more of the thing to do. Pray for direction. I can't tell you what direction to go in. I'm not going to condemn you for whatever sins you're doing. I can't get focused on that. You know, whether you steal something or you, or you, or you, or you have sex with somebody or you, oh, I'm just trying to name the sins, or you're, you're drunk at the, in the square in the, at the noonday or you're, um, uh, you know, or you're lazy or you're jealous and envious or whatever it is, all those things we do. It's up to you to police that in yourself. And I, I trust that your faith in the Lord is enough to help start you down the road of, of eradicating that, but it takes dedication. Sometimes it's going to take, you know, sacrificing, fasting, things like that. It, it's, 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 you know, the alternative is if you leave those doors open, then these witches and the demons that they send can just have their way with you because you're weak. Right? To get strong in the spirit, we deny the flesh. Right? So when it starts coming around real strong, like I got a friend, you know, uh, well, I'll just talk about Rich since he has a public ministry and he's talked about this before. He'll fast and he'll do a lot of, you know, he'll do things to really strengthen. I mean, he's, he's really probably the expert on this topic more so than I am in terms of, you know, going up against some major, uh, and I still have time going up against some major, you know, groups of people and stuff. It's different than the, the stuff that I face. But the same result, I mean, it's the same thing in the end. People say, no, see, you can't send it back. Cause see, that's, that's being unforgiving and unloving. That's not being Christ-like. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. If you don't teach someone that that's not the right thing to do, they're going to just keep doing it to people and hurting people, and it'll be my fault. They have to know that... You know, when it fails, it fails. They have to know when the, when the curse they threw on someone else comes back on them. If they don't know that, they could stumble and fall badly, irrevocably even. Now, I don't wish death on people or anything like that. I just do what the Lord says. I just, you know, um, you know I cast those things out. I return them so that, and, and the proviso is always so that they know you know, who they are in this, where it came from, what happened, so that they can make a decision. I'm not condemning them. I don't have unforgiveness toward them. I certainly don't hate them. I want to see them change and realize that the law of karma, that God has not mocked what we sow, so shall we reap. If we sow witchcraft, we reap the world, and eventually their lives are ruined. And I've seen, how many people have we seen, Trish, their lives completely ruined, by this witchcraft, because every time they go do something to somebody else, which is a lot of, or try to mind control someone else, or take someone under their slavery, or every, every time they do that, I've known some of these women who've had, you know, 200 male slaves. And, you know, they send all the succubi and succubus things going on, and they're having sex with them in the spirit, and they just keep them tethered there by, by 
sex at night and all that stuff. And um, every once in a while, there's a guy that might fight back. But I mean, you know, they, these guys don't even know what happened to them. It's all about control. And they get controlled through their, you know, testicles. I'm sorry to put it that way. But that's how they get control. And, uh, you know, and then they, then they, you know, basically, if you let this thing spread, it spreads throughout the entire society. Oh, the, some of the curses they can send are like, you know, things like, um, you know, tying your weakness to, you know, I mean, it's really exploiting your weaknesses so that you look bad in the sight of the most time. And that's a, that's a favorite, you know, um, trying to ruin your, you know, your relation with your friends, family, whatever, uh, ruin your finances, have any, any endeavor that you may set out to do, all the work that you've so diligently put in all the discipline you so diligently put in to make sure that the result is total failure after you may be spending years of your life working toward a certain goal to make sure that goal is ruined before you ever get there. Those are the kinds of things they do. Um, they don't throw blessings. They never do. I mean, they may think they're blessings, but they don't. They're, they're things like um, they want to gift people with financial security and health and all that who they like. That's not a blessing. You know, they do that, sure. Uh, but then eventually they realize, oh, in order to get a pop, I have to do something bad to someone. Yes, for something good to happen to someone over there that I wanted to go to. So I have to maybe kill someone over here so that over there I take the benefit of that killing toward uh, the one I'm aiming it at. The sacrifice for the benefit of so-and-so. That's not a blessing. Sorry. Yes, they have to hurt things to help things. Now, that's not a blessing. When people of Christ, they pray over you that you would be blessed, that you'd be healed in the name of Jesus Christ, the ultimate power beyond all witchcraft combined. And, um, you know, and that's, the, and that's the thing. That's the blessing. It comes without strings attached. The witches have to do some awful thing to get a good thing to conjure up the power, to then focus it on the thing that they want. Usually it's what they want. And what do they want? They want more money. They want to, um, you know, have a, uh, a, a handsome, uh, you know, thing they can put in a, in a cage, a, a boy toy. They want uh, their children to become rock stars or movie stars or something. They want, you know, they, they, the tip of, they want a bigger house. They want a Mercedes Benz. They want, you know, it's all about stuff like that. I mean, it, it, they want to get even with somebody who, who uh, uh, shunned them or, uh, you know, who, who, who thwarted a sexual advance. They want to make sure their lives are ruined totally, utterly, that they can never have a life again. They want to cut their balls off. They want to, uh, you know, win in political office. They want to um, be big time winners out there. You know, they're, they want to go do these rituals to ensure their power goes on indefinitely. But the thing about power is they have to keep stoking it up and doing these bad things in order to keep it going, to keep it going. And, and then they're slipping because they're getting older. So then they, you know, as they get older, their power wanes automatically. So they have to, you know, find ways of doing awful things to, um, to boost themselves. And if you understand that principle of witchcraft, you understand about 100% more than most people. Why? Because most people don't realize it's a quid pro quo system, that you gotta do something bad to get something good. They don't know that. I've discussed this with witches. I mean, I, I pretty well know what I'm talking about. It's, uh, if they think they can be like a white Wiccan witch and just kind of do these nice things and create these good causes, no. That, Ultimately, they can't get anywhere. Nice guys finish last. They want to go places, they got to do bad things. Things that are held in secret, of course. I mean, for example, if they're cursing you, and if, you're, and if, if your life gets ruined from their curse, they can take credit for that and apply it to their own lives, let's say, to boost themselves. Anyway, it's hard to keep up with it all, all the angles that they're in. But I mean, I thought that we'd just take the opportunity since last week was a heavy week. So a lot of you did say you had noticed some kind of a beam, some kind of thing, oppressive, 
force. And then, then we, we saw some other um, witchcraft elements last week that, that people I've talked to that are close to me, I realized it hit them as well. So we've been praying. We're praying collectively and we're, you know, we're, uh, I'm, I'm engaged in, in uh, what I already know how to do before I even got to this planet, which is spiritual warfare. It's just, it's second nature to me. Um, I've had them say, well, what about your life? What about your record? I mean, you didn't, you didn't hit the target. You didn't, you know, your novel didn't become a bestseller. You didn't, you know, you, you, your movies weren't any good. You didn't have any, your music isn't on the uh, billboard charts. I mean, how can you claim success? Everything you've done is a tragedy to failure. I'm like, okay, just keep thinking that. Not as far as I'm concerned. You know, um, it just all depends what your goal is. My goal is not to, uh, it, you know, never has been to, you know, I create because, uh, because I create. I'm not looking for it to save me. I'm already saved. I don't need the world to acknowledge me. I don't, I don't really need that in my life because I, I create music because I love to do it and I share it with people and quite a few people. And uh, that's, that's, that's good enough for me. Uh, I'm not seeking any more than that, or I would be seeking it. I'm not seeking it. I have a world-class studio. Um, I've got great musicians around to, to work with. We put out really good stuff. It gets shared with lots of people. It goes all over the Internet and all over YouTube. We, I get to a podcast that's also in the top ten in the world, you know, in terms of my category, whatever that is. In terms of this provider, too, I mean, it's not in the world of all the podcasts, but in, in this particular place, I'd say that's pretty successful. And, um, you know, when I'm driving around uh, in my RV <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm looking at everything, I feel so blessed to be allowed to see the land and the, and the, and the things, you know, I just, and I, I wander when I feel like wandering. I have a great relationship with my daughter, my wife, and friends, and... I don't know what more, you, you know, the main thing that pursuit with me is God. And in that, there, it's, it, it hasn't, I wish it was more. But I know that if I make it a, 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 like a thing that I strive for, it will be denied. Because it will become a form of idolatry in some weird way. I understand, you see what I mean? So I have to go at it the way I'm going at it. But yeah, I love the Lord, absolutely. I think his creation is just awe-inspiring. I'm, I'm met with the most beautiful view. Um, every day I, I just, you know, I, I take it for granted a little bit and then I travel and I come back and it's like it's re rebooted. I know that I'm getting older and that I will eventually meet with, with those issues and uh, I pray every day about all that. And uh, basically, you know, I, I'm just living in the world, but uh, there are dangers. And around me, there's been these people that have been, uh, well, when they're jealous of me, it's just, it's not really what I have. They, that's what they think. It's really, it's the um, freedom that I flaunt because I don't hide, you know. And the reason I don't hide is because I know people that hide. You know, they, the, there's a freedom that God has given me that, that is not, look, I've had my own schedule, my own money and all that, you know, long time ago. And uh, I could do what I wanted, pretty much. And um, you know, I, went, I decided to go decadent with it all and went broke and did all this stupid stuff. And I uh, well-deserved <laughs> getting my butt kicked. But you know, I'm sure the witches felt they had a little hand in that. <laughs> but um, I wasn't happy, is the point. I wasn't free, is the more important point. So I had what everybody wanted, you know? I had a house, and I had this wife, and I had like a Porsche, and I had, you know, friends and parties and different things. And, uh, you know, I could just drive to the beach if I felt like, whatever, you know what I mean? It was just drive romantically down Sunset Boulevard in a Porsche, you know? It's, I mean, what more, you know, isn't that what everyone wanted? Drugs booze, whatever, had all that, T totally feeling like I was in prison, you know, just 
uh, depressed terminally, you know, having to go to, to therapy and having, you know, having panic attacks. Just, things just weren't right. I was just not living the right, I was living in a kind of a Truman Show life. So I can tell you, you know, the material world, I was just very materialistic. And of course, that was a bad fit for me because I'm not a materialistic person. I have to have, be fed by the spirit or I, I, I go insane or I die. So I would naturally become self-destructive because that's the only path to, to put an end to it. Because if you don't have any money, then you can't have those things. You know, it just it was almost like self-preservation. So I would take myself down, and other people would gloat and they'd laugh. But even then, they were upset with the fact that I would just do what I wanted. But now it's different. When you have the Lord, it's like you know, yeah, you know, you 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 can have or not have whether you obey or you're bound, as Paul says in the Bible. It's kind of the same. And, it's been, and that's been proven over the last, uh, say, 13, 14 years with me. It's been, you know, um, it's been low and it's been, it, it's been high and it's been medium. It's been, it, but it's the same, it's the same thing. It's the same Lord that's there, you know, and you're aware of that. And so that comes with, you know, then we're dealing with the matrix prison of this planet. And yes, we're all subject to that, but the only freedom there is, here's what I'm trying to say. The freedom that they're, what they're jealous of is freedom. I get jealous when I see people free too. I saw a homeless guy walking around backwards. I told you this story a long time ago. And he was twirling back. He had a certain thing he was doing. And I, I looked at that freedom and I was jealous. And that's what it is. You can have all the material things you want. Who cares? You know, you have, you know, now people have had, you know, the Ferraris and the boats and the, you know, the airplanes and all the stuff and the, you know, the, the young blonde uh, trophy girlfriend and, and they're just miserable. I mean, just beyond miserable. And they're taking all kinds of prescription drugs just to make it, make themselves cope through the day. There's no freedom in, in, in materialism. There's no freedom in the flesh. There's only freedom in the spirit, ladies and gentlemen, and I can say that from experience. I've tried to go, the, well, see, when I was a kid and everyone had toys, I couldn't love those toys. I couldn't, get some, I had a friend down the block who, he would catalog them all from his different aspects of childhood. And I just so envied that, I, it drove me in completely insane. Mine would get lost, broken. Sometimes we just light them on fire, you know? And I just had everything slip through my hands, you know, in that way. And that actually proved, in the end, to be a very good trait. Because I was always kind of otherworldly. So I was looking toward the spirit, you know, because I was not, I was always unhappy with the material world. And the reason I was unhappy with it is because I couldn't hold on to it. Nothing would keep, you know, a toy wouldn't give me pleasure for very long and or anything. You know, it, it, I couldn't, you know, hold on to anything. Everything kept passing through. And, and you know, I knew I had to find a solution to that. There was a bit, you know, that, that could lead to real self-destructive behavior because, you know, you, you hurt yourself just to feel like you're alive, you know, because you're not holding on and nothing is giving you any kind of feeling or you're not being nurtured, really. And I say, well, it turns out to be a blessing in disguise in the end because the Lord will not let me grab on to anything. If I grabbed onto my guitar, I got a nice guitar over here. I got a beautiful Lakeland bass. Actually, the neck needs, the neck kind of, well, it's okay. They've dealt with the neck. But anyway, it's a, it's a five-string bass. Um, and uh, it's, it's uh, got a really nice tone to it. And I put it through an API preamp, uh, a channel strip, rather, with compressor, EQ, and... Uh, you know, it's an API channel strip that, that then jacks straight into the, uh, my session. Okay, I'm, I gotta wind this up in five minutes. That gets me into my session. Did we get it? Okay. So it winds me into my session and it sounds amazing. It has a star, kind of a wood, sunburst finish on it, kind of red on the outside with a yellow sunburst finish. There's a lot you can do with that bass, you know, it'd be like the kind of thing you grab onto and kind of go to, go to bed with. <laughs> if, you, 
if you know what I mean. Well, guys understand that sort of thing, right? It's like Full Metal Jacket. They make you sleep with your rifle and give her a girl's, give it a girl's name, right? I mean, it's that kind of thing where you can get really into it, right? I'm not allowed. I just, I just don't. It just doesn't. It's there, kind of hanging on my wall for when I want to use a bass on a track. And there it sits. Not being worshipped and loved like it should be. And, you know, and I've, I've taken the other analogy. I go into the studio. I got something that most people don't have. I've got uh, uh, a pair of Pultec EQs from, you know, the, the famous Pultec EQs. And now I understand they're, you know, they're like five grand a piece. So it's, you know, not something someone's going to buy for their studio necessarily. Well, it's amazing. The price was four. Now it's, it used to be 35, then four, now five. Because the guy makes them, he revived Pultec. They're all handmade. They're, well, they're not made in a garage anymore. They're, they now have a factory. But, I mean, it's still, everything's hand-wound, handmade. And they're made just the same way they were in 1955. You know, it's an heirloom piece. I should really pay a lot of attention to it. I should really get it because you put it on a track. It's just what it does to the bass and the mid range is just and, and the high. It's just what it, it just gives it that punch that that you're looking for when you need it. It's the one thing that does it without much work. I should really love that thing. Well, I do in a way. I'm glad it's there, but I it just I shouldn't I get more for my money. Shouldn't I be like, yeah, this is a pull tack, you know, yeah. And yet it doesn't, it, <laughs> it's just bizarre. It's, it's, I think the same thing happened with, I used to look at astrology. And I'd look at the astrology and, and you know, the same thing would happen. If, you, know, you know, there was a pursuit with all that stuff. And then that sort of went away. Um, all of this stuff went into another place because of the Lord. The Lord has to occupy that place that the Poltec or the whatever, the, the bass guitar or the whatever you have, it takes, it, it, it becomes secondary and when it becomes secondary, it's like it's cool, but you don't, you know what I mean? It's not like, I can't put it into words what happens, but it's wonderful. And if I were ever to put any of these things there, well, I wouldn't do it, but I, it's because it's hard. I mean, you take a lot of work to. It, I don't get fed by things. You know what I'm saying? This was a talk about witchcraft because we went through a whole week of the. Every August, it seems, we have the same. What is it with August? Every August, without fail, this, the, all this stuff happens. That's when I had the Navy fight song, the whole bit. What? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I have to do a, a, a trash run. I know you'd like to go on that trash run. I have to actually drive the trash down uh, with the truck down to the end of the road. You've got to get the mouse. And there's a mouse out there. We've caught something like how many? A dozen mice? Twenty? We've caught... It's been, a, it's been an onslaught. We had no mice for a long time, and all of a sudden they're just here. So, okay, well, I will be there in, I got two minutes. I've timed it exactly. Um, I'm getting a honeydew thing going on here with the, with the trash and the mice and whatnot. So, we talked today about witchcraft. I know you know a lot of the basics on this, but I don't think you realize how many of these people there are. They're everywhere. And they all keep their mouths shut as to what they're all about. You'll never know who they are. You'll never, as Obama said about the drones, you'll never see it coming. These boys that get under their, under, they, they, they think they're running their own lives, but their lives are being run. For, they think their thoughts are their own. No, they're not. They put thoughts in your head and you act on them. The whole society is run by this. Unless you're really aware, or unless you really have the Lord, your thoughts are not going to be your thoughts. Someone else can put them there. Now, I know I've had fun with these people and I've had thoughts put there and then I go ahead and do the thing and act like I'm going along. And then I don't. But that's because the thing that was put there was a, the idea I had anyway. 
So you see, I didn't feel a need to not do it out of pride or spite. Got me? I'm not saying it's always bad things, but control is the, is the bottom line. And they'll put the idea there so that you have this control thing, but ultimately they think they're controlling you because they see, see they can only succeed if they see the result. You're doing this, you're doing that. See, they put the thought there. They know how to implant thoughts in your head. You'll think it's your thought, but it's really theirs. Like that gal that put the, the pyramid cage, or whatever kind of cage she put us in, you know, that she, she had us in the center of her circle and she was putting, trying to put thoughts in, her, in my head that I would, and then I wrote that song and then of course she ran away and we never saw her again. She had been there on that forum for years and years, was very well liked and well respected. But you see, she couldn't, she was detected. And when they get detected, when they get popped, they have to run because uh, there's severe punishment for that detection because that's supposed to never happen. And that, if I, if I could leave you with that podcast right now, I think I've done a service so people are aware. You be praying every day in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only way you can break this stuff with that name and praying in that name. That's all I know. And even with that, you still can get scarred and wounded. Yes, it's, it's, you're in a war here. And in a war, you don't walk through unscathed when you're on the battlefield. So expecting that is wrong on your part too. You know, it's just not being bitter if you're wounded and wanting vengeance yourself because then you're doing the same thing they're doing. And then, you know, then Satan wins and, and God loses and uh, everybody loses. You know, the, 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 thou shalt not su suffer a witch to live. And this is what we're talking about right here. You know, because when they're stripped of power, they don't live in that way. I know there's a biblical thing of, you know, the, you know, putting the witches to death back in those days. And then Jesus sort of ended that, that whole thing. Jesus was more about, you know, about this form of warfare as being the superior one because it, would, because it didn't come with, you know, a sense of personal vengeance and personal uh, vendetta, which the Lord will never, ever allow. You know that. And with that, I bid you shalom, shalom, shalom. I love you. I'm praying for you. And, uh, what a wonderful time it is to be alive because of Jesus. This is, this, so many things are happening now. So much truth being revealed. It's wonderful.